This is the DeepCool AK500 CPU cooler. It's a high performance single tower air cooler that maximizes cooling potential with a very large heat sink. I snagged this for an upcoming build video and it's so good, I decided to give this thing a video of its own. And in case you were wondering, this is not sponsored. DeepCool makes a ton of different CPU coolers from both air and liquid cooling. The AK500 is one of their air coolers, and it comes in three different variants. They have the standard AK500, the Zero Dark Edition, which blacks out the whole cooler, and they even make a white version for their super clean all-white builds. I picked up the Zero Dark model for myself. Now, all three variants have a MSRP of $54.99 USD. However, currently over on Amazon, you can pick up the standard AK500 for 50 bucks. And it'd be great if you use my affiliate link below if you decide to go grab one for yourself. I'm gonna keep this video pretty simple today. I'm gonna show you what's included in the box, how difficult it is to install onto your motherboard, and what kind of performance you can expect for your money. If you enjoy unboxing and review videos of new PC hardware, this is something we frequently do here on the channel. So consider subscribing down below and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload new content. With that, let's open this thing up. Once you finally figure out how to get the sleeve off, you're greeted with simple and neat packaging. We'll look at the cooler in a minute. First, let's see what else is included. It's got each mounting option individually packaged, whether you decide to go with AMD or Intel, which makes this cooler very easy for first time builders. Here we have the adjustable Intel backplate and it's made of metal, not plastic. This cooler is compatible with both AMD's new AM5 platform and Intel's new LGA1700 socket. So don't worry if this will work with your system. It will, if it was built sometime in this decade. The straight brackets are for Intel and the curved ones are AMD. Don't get it confused because AMD usually runs more straight design brackets while Intel has the curved ones. The little circle nuts are for mounting the brackets onto the motherboard. They also include an L-shaped screwdriver that you'll have to use to mount the cooler, and you'll see why in a second when I go to install this. You got a fairly large size tube of thermal paste and an optional low-speed adapter cable that reduces the fan speed. I'm guessing with a resistor for sound-sensitive environments. Lastly, there's an instruction manual and an extra set of brackets for mounting the fan onto the cooler as well, just in case you break the other ones or decide you want to upgrade later by installing an extra fan onto the back. The cooler is simple, elegant, and feels quite premium if you ask me. It's already assembled with the fan and mounting bracket attached. That's a nice change from the more budget options I've used lately. The fan is a 120mm FK120 that runs between 500 and 1850 RPMs, or 500 to 1550 using the low speed adapter. It produces 68.9 CFM of airflow and 52.24 with the adapter. Not sure if that's a lot of airflow or not, but I thought I'd include it for those that care. Also, I'll leave the dimensions of the cooler down below too. The most important measurement is the cooler being 158 millimeters tall. You might need to know that when looking into using this for your build. That's all that's included in the box. Now I wanna walk you through installation onto a motherboard. Today I'll be using an AMD motherboard. You can use AMD or Intel as I said, but it supports all the latest generation sockets. The board I'm using today is the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4 AC. It's an AM4 motherboard, very easy to install, so let's just walk through it. First, you'll need to remove the shipping sticker from the bottom of the cooler to prep for the install. If you don't, you'll be pulling the cooler back off later after you notice your blue screening from an overheating CPU. You'll be reusing your original AMD backplate for this install, so just remove the two plastic hook style brackets and throw them into your motherboard box or the cooler box for later. The standoff screws thread into the backplate by hand and keep everything nice and snug. All you need to do is run them down with your fingers and you've got the mounting points on your motherboard. Then we need to place the curve brackets down onto the standoffs with the curve in towards the CPU socket. You've got to use the circle nuts to mount the cooler brackets onto the motherboard. These can be hand tightened too. Make sure when you're installing these brackets and tightening down the nuts, you have the standoff mounts up. You want the threaded pieces that are on the brackets to face upwards because you're about to mount your cooler onto this and it needs something to screw on to. Remove the fan from the CPU cooler by pulling out on the bracket. Be careful, these fins can cut you. You'll also need to pop off the cover plate to access this square hole. This is how you'll attach the cooler to your bracket system. 
Before you install the CPU cooler, don't forget to put your thermal paste on. There's different methods to how you should be installing thermal paste. I like to use the spread method, almost like you're making a peanut butter sandwich, but some people like to create a dot. Some people do the X pattern. There's tons of videos on the internet that show you how to apply thermal paste. Maybe I'll make something like that. Once you install your thermal paste, grab your CPU cooler and your L-shaped screwdriver to mount this down onto the bracket. The screwdriver is made to fit all the way through the center of the CPU cooler to tighten the left mounting screw. They're spring-loaded and captive, so you'll need to apply a bit of pressure. The screwdriver will stop spinning and it'll just fit snug. Once you tighten the two screws all the way down, snap your cover panel back into place. The cover panel is simply decoration. It's made of plastic, but it's quick release, so you just snap it on, which is really nice. Good luck fighting this fan and metal bracket system to attach the fan. I hate these. Last thing you'll have to do is plug in the cooler. There's only one cable and it plugs into your CPU fan header just like this. The cooler install isn't hard as you can see, but if you're thinking about using this as an upgrade to your current system, you may have a bit of a challenge if doing this inside of a case. Obviously it's easier on a cardboard box. Now Deep Cool claims the AK500 has 240 watts of heat dissipation power. This should theoretically be enough to handle even the ultra high power consumption from all the next gen CPUs. Well, since I don't have any brand new processors yet, I chose the hottest one I had available. I used the Ryzen 9 3950X, which has a TDP of 105 watts. I ran a few different tests to stress the CPU and push as much heat at the core as possible. I ran Cinebench R23, both the single core and multi-thread. I ran a Blender benchmark, and then I also ran Unigen Heaven to simulate gaming. The competition was AMD's very own Wraith Prism box cooler, the EK240 AIO liquid cooler, and MSI's Core Liquid S360, which I recently reviewed here on the channel. You can see the Cinebench R23 multi and single core temperatures for the AK500 look great. It allowed the 3950X to run much cooler than the Wraith Prism and was only two degrees off from the liquid cooling performance of the EK AIO. Not bad for less than half the price. Now the Blender benchmarks and the gaming tests were next where once again, the Deep Cool AK500 displayed a large lead over the Wraith Prism, running 67 degrees Celsius in Blender and 59 in Unigen Heaven. Overall, performance was excellent with the AK500 going toe-to-toe -to -toe with liquid coolers that cost double its MSRP. I made this video about the AK500 because I really only have one negative comment about it. Fan noise. Once I messed with the fan curve, I was able to eliminate it, but if you use the out-of-box settings with your motherboard, it has this weird low hum. I tried to capture the fan noise, but unfortunately my microphone doesn't want to pick it up. At about 500 to 550-ish RPMs, it has this weird hum that it creates, and I don't know if it's the fan blowing through the fins of the cooler or what it is. I tried hooking up the low-speed adapter to see if that would make a difference. It doesn't. The only thing I notice that the low-speed adapter does is it lowers the max RPMs of the cooler. There's a lot to love about the Deepcool AK500 CPU cooler. The design and materials are top notch, it's easy to install, and performance is even on par with high-end liquid cooling. One other thing I really love about the AK500 CPU cooler is when it's installed onto the motherboard, it's offset from the CPU socket towards the IO shield. This gives you plenty of clearance for taller RAM sticks while maintaining the amazing cooling performance Deepcool was able to achieve. I like that they did this rather than simply moving the fan up to make room for the RAM. That cuts down airflow over the heatsink and might hinder cooling performance. If you decide you wanna pick one of these up for yourself, whether it be the Zero Dark Edition I have here, maybe you want the all white one to finish off your white themed PC, or you wanna save $5 and get the AK500 Standard Edition, Use my affiliate links below because it helps out the channel and I'd really appreciate it. Lastly, don't forget to give us a like down below and subscribe for more PC related content. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one.